Now let's zoom in a bit and take a closer look at the region in direct firing range, the other major players in West Asia. And I must say here that this region has never been a beacon of stability, but last night's attack makes it even more of a tinderbox. The Iranian missiles and drones flew over multiple countries before reaching Israel. Plus Iran's proxies joined the attack, we told you about them, like the Hezbollah. It's a group based in Lebanon. And Lebanon is major player number one. It has always been caught in Israel's conflicts. In fact, Israel had occupied the southern part of Lebanon from 1985 to 2000 for almost 15 years. So if the Iran-Israel fight escalates, Lebanon will likely get caught in the war and they will side with Iran. Next, we have Syria. The official owners of the Golan Heights region occupied by Israel and major player number two. Syria is another country close to Iran. Their president is Bashar al-Assad, and he's still in power only thanks to Tehran. They helped him win a civil war. There are also armed, Iran-backed groups in Syria, like smaller versions of the Hezbollah. So if it comes to it, Syria will side with Iran. Then there's major player number three, Iraq. And this is a bit of a unique case. On the one hand, Iraq has fought a major war against Iran, the first Gulf War in the 1980s. But since then, the countries have come together. Iraq's prime minister is even considered pro-Iranian. His path to the, to the top job was helped by pro-Iran political parties. Iran, Iraq, in fact, also has an Iraq, many Iran-backed Iran militias on its soil. They are in Iraq. So in the event of a war, even if Iraq stays out, the government stays out, these militias will join Iran. And speaking of Iranian proxies, there are also some Houthis in Yemen. The group does not just attack ships in the Red Sea, they're capable of reaching Israel as well, thanks to Iran-made drones that the Houthis have. And that makes Yemen major player number four. So we have Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. Directly or indirectly, these countries will be on Iran's side. But they aren't the only ones with skin in the game. You also have the Arab states. We'll start with, with Israel's neighbor, Jordan, major player number five. Jordan is home to US military bases. It is also home to millions of Palestinians. Jordan is across the border from Israel, so that is where many Palestinian refugees took shelter after their displacement during the creation of Israel. Millions still live there, and Jordan does not want any more. So it always tries to de-escalate tensions. It is at the forefront of peace talks, and it also helped shoot down Iranian weapons last night. Jordan wants peace and calm to return and an end to the influx of refugees, which brings us to major player number six, the leader of the Arab and the Muslim world, and that's Saudi Arabia. Iran and Saudi Arabia had been rivals for decades, the two power centers in West Asia, but they buried the hatchet last year. They normalized ties. Riyadh would not want to resume hostilities, so expect the kingdom to try and calm things down. In fact, look at Saudi Arabia's statement. It has called on all parties to exercise utmost restraint and spare the region and its people from the dangers of war. Basically, they're telling everyone to calm down. The other Arab states are likely to follow Riyadh's lead and considering their ties with the US, the Arab pressure may be key to keeping the peace, making Saudi Arabia the biggest regional player to watch right now. has launched a direct attack from Iranian soil towards the state of Israel.